Hi, I'm Dr. Lave Smith, and if you're pissed off, if you're outraged, if you're fed up and you can't stand it anymore and you don't know what to do, you don't know how to deal with that, this is the video that you need to watch. I'm Dr. Lave Smith, and I'm here today to help you figure out what you're going to do with this outrage, with this pain, with this anger, with this sadness that you're feeling at whatever's going on in your life or the life of those you love. The first thing you need to understand, if you're going to change things from here, is you need to understand what's called, or what I'm calling, the controversy pendulum. Now, Newton's third law, okay? Newton's law of motion, right? Newton's third law in physics states that for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction, okay? So when we're gonna talk about things psychologically or socially, I believe the same is true. This is what I'm calling the controversy pendulum. Every event, no matter how big, no matter how unjust, no matter how terrible, no matter how whatever, is gonna have an equal and opposite reaction long term. I know that can be hard to believe, but I firmly believe this in my life when I see it with current events, when I see it with politics, when I see it with world events, something terrible happens, something bad happens, a court ruling, um, uh, an international event, a controversy, a political event, something happens that causes outrage, that causes enormous change in one direction or the other. But what you see over time is the pendulum effect, okay? It causes an equal and opposite reaction by the other side, from the other side of momentum. So what you see over time is slow and steady and large or big social change in the other direction. I truly believe this. And if you look at events in world history, they will play that out. They will show you that. There will be proof therein. So you got to understand the controversy pendulum that something happens over time. If you give it enough time, there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction in the other direction. If you want to be part of that reaction, that's fine. And you can really make a dent in the universe the other way. But understanding that is going to help you cope with it in the meantime. Now, it's important to understand that if you get stuck short term in outrage and pain and disgust, you're not going to be able to do anything. You need to be able to get unstuck. How do we get unstuck? How do we get out of short term reactive thinking? After all, you ever try to argue with someone who you feel is being irrational? I know I have. I don't do it much anymore because we're speaking different languages. So if I'm arguing with you and I feel you're being irrational, in other words, you're not in reality, and I'm trying to be rational, and I'm trying to use logic and ration, it's not gonna work. Rational thinking does not, is not the same language as irrational thinking. So we're not gonna agree on things and I'm just gonna get more and more mad. So we need a mechanism to get unstuck when we are feeling something this strongly. To do this, I think it's important to change the perspective at which we are viewing the problem. We need to adjust and get a 10,000 foot view instead of the five foot view. So to do that, we can ask ourselves different questions. First of all, what positive changes can we anticipate will come from the current event? So look long-term and ask yourself, what positive changes can come from this? Are likely to come from this? What has resulted from similar events historically in the past? There are plenty of precedents to show that something controversial happens, something unjust, a social injustice, a world injustice, a personal injustice, unfairness, things like that. There's plenty of examples to show that over time, things level out and change is induced in the other direction. What are some of those examples? Those examples are gonna give you perspective and they're gonna make you feel more hopeful. What can I do? What's in my power to do right now if I can change my mood from outrage 
from pain, if I can change it to something more positive, what are some steps that I can take to induce positive change in the direction that I want in the world? Number three, we need to sit back, take some deep breaths. Take some deep breaths. No matter what's going on that's causing outrage, we need to sit back, take some deep breaths, and then consciously decide to channel that rage, to channel that hurt, to channel that anger into slow, positive behavioral actions that can change the world. What are some examples of that? Well, how about donating to charities? I know that doesn't sound big, but over time, if a lot more people do these things, a lot more change can be affected. What about volunteering your time? It's pretty hard to turn down a volunteer, right? Volunteering your time towards a cause that might be related to what you're angry about or hurt about. What about writing letters? If you've ever seen the movie Shawshank Redemption, there's an example in there that I love personally, that I've used in my life, that I'll continue to use and that you can use. Andy Dufresne, okay, he's a prisoner in this movie and if you haven't seen it, you should go see it today. If you haven't seen it, Andy Dufresne is a prisoner, wrongfully incarcerated, and he's trying to uh, make a case on why he should be freed from his lifelong sentence. So he's writing a letter a day to the higher up authorities and he's requesting money so that he can start a library for the fellow prisoners. He's an educated guy. So he writes a letter a week and he keeps going and he keeps going. And they ignore him. And then he keeps writing and he keeps writing until they send him some money. And then they finally send him some money. I can't remember the amount, but it's a, it's a pittance. And he gets excited and he's talking to the warden and the warden said, see, there you go. And so what does Andy do? He says, no. And so now he writes more letters twice a week instead of once a week. How can we do that in our lives? Well, you can write until they can't ignore you anymore. And we have more ways to do that than ever. You can write emails, you can write blogs, you can get on social media, you can DM people, you can tweet at them. You can keep going until you feel your voice is heard. You can have a slow and steady positive result in that way. So these are some ways to channel it. These are ways to channel your anger, channel your disgust, channel your pain into slow, steady action. And remember the controversy pendulum. There's gonna be an equal and opposite reaction the other way eventually. If you wait and if you do enough, there will be change that will come from these current events that are outraging you. I'm Dr. Leif Smith. I hope that helps. Those are three things you can do right now in your life to get over and to channel that rage and that anger and that pain that you're feeling no matter what has happened to you.